So today I'm going to talk about canopy forming species. Just to simplify, I will use uh, the term terminology canopy forming species and then scientific names Cystosira forest and Cystosira species. So this is a group of species which are belonging to the genus Cystosira. So you can see here, these are large species, macroalgae, and uh, they presented the climax study in the uh, northern Adriatic. So under those macroalgae, we can find just normal photophilic uh, macroalgae. Uh, in this talk, I will present in the first part uh, the long-term fluctuation of those species in the northern Adriatic, because we had in the past uh, um, really uh, nice development, developed forest, and then we had some regression. And in the second part, I will talk about the decline of those species in some uh, locality in the center part of the western eastern coast. So these are large brown macroalgae. They are forming uh, dense belts and some of them are forming, forming forest. Uh, they are occupying uh, intertidal zone from 0.5 meter to about uh, 40 meters uh, uh, subtidal zone. Some of them are coming as monospecific settlements and some of them as mixed forest. Uh, this is very important species. They are long-lived species but with very low uh, recruitment capability and as well very low uh, growth. So I will present those species in the northern Adriatic, which is the northernmost biogeographic sector in the Mediterranean Sea. The southern border of this uh, biogeographic sector is defined by February uh, seawater temperature of 11 degrees and it extends from the southern point of the Istria Peninsula, Cape Promontore, till uh, approximately city of Ancona. So the western eastern coast is uh, uh, mainly rocky and is particularly suitable for the formation of uh, this large brown macroalgae. In, we have quite good historical data sets of those species uh, in the northern Adriatic and uh, we use one very important book for us from 1952 uh, from Ercegovic uh, which documented and described uh, all canopy forming species in the Adriatic Sea. So these are location along the western eastern coast and as well we use the other detailed uh, historical surveys along the western eastern coast from other researchers. So the locations are here, mainly uh, in Rovin area. We also use the uh, rich uh, herbarium collection in our center and altogether we found, I will now go here in detail, 12 uh, canopy forming species. We uh, except just one in our um, investigation from 2003 to 2015, just uh, we didn't find uh, Cystosira dubia. So this is very rare species and uh, species uh, which is coming uh, a little bit uh, in deeper water, so perhaps this might be reason, so we don't know. I will go just briefly to introduce, I thought to do, introduce or not, but then I decided to, to show you the variability of those species uh, in the northern Adriatic. So this is one species which is coming in intertidal zone, but we are going now in subtidal zone and see which species, which is the composition of the species. So this is Tissosira barbata, which is coming in uh, subtidal zone, in sheltered places, mostly shelter base, and from 0 0.5 to 40 meters. We can see that some tali uh, can be more than 50 centimeters in height. Then Cystosira compressa, the species which is uh, characteristic for sheltered and exposed places. In some urban areas, uh, there are some tali more than two meters in height. So really big forest of those species in shallow water. And usually they are coming from zero meter to about 40 meter depth. Cystosira humilis is uh, similar to the Cystosira compressa. We can find these species in uh, intertidal zone, in rocky pools, but also uh, in subtidal zone as epiphyte on other canopy forming species. Cystosira corniculata is the species which form uh, really uh, forest underwater in deeper water below four meters. 
and it's uh, forming a really dense aggregate. And in this aggregate, as we can see here, we can find rich flora, but as well fauna. So these habitats are very important for the biodiversity underwater. Cystosira crinita live in shallow water, as we can see here is building mostly uh, dense belts in shallow water from 0.5 to 3 meters. Then Cystosira foeniculata is another species. I will say the queen among all Cystosira species. You can immediately recognize those species and distinguish them from all other because the branches are like the leaves. It comes mostly in sheltered and in intermediately exposed habitats, and this is only species which is uh, characteristic for the deeper water in the Adriatic Sea. We can find also these species on 110 meters. And the last species, just not to be boring to you, is uh, Cystosira spinosa. Uh, the old name was Cystosira adriatica. It's characteristic for sheltered and intermediately exposed habitats. It's rare species and the maximum depth is about uh, uh, 50 meters. So if we're taking all those species together and if we we'll try to put in some imaginary profile, as we can see here, in the intertidal zone, we will find Cystosira amentacea for sure. In this shallow water till about three meter depth, we will find the uh, forest or belt of these two species and a small amount of uh, the species Cystosira compressa. Cystosira crinita and barbata are characteristic for non-urban areas and compressa we can find in high qual quantity uh, mostly in uh, urban areas. So very often, these belts and forests can be interrupted by the sea arch in Barents, which are extending mostly in the northern Adriatic from about one to three, four meters depth, depends on the sea bottom topography. So if you are going a little bit deeper from three meters, so we can find the forest, real forest from Cystosira foeniculata and corniculata. So we can see on more Flat profile, we can find Cystosira foeniculata, and more stupid profile is characteristic for the forest of Cystosira corniculata. And there, this forest can be associated also with other species. So in the literature, it's very well described uh, why those species uh, are regressing with the time, uh, which could be the processes. So um, it's very well explained the sewage and uh, the urban pollution, then the sea arching grazing, and the also intense butsilage formation in the water column. So we had the regression of those species uh, during end of the 80s and uh, in the mid of the 90s. And uh, after that was the recolonization phase. So all that what I showed now, uh, will show now in the future, it's uh, from the period from 2003 to 2015. So the processes, uh, you can see this are planktonic mucilage, which are characteristic for the northern Adriatic. They are depositing on those species, and with the time, we can uh, see the deleterious effect on uh, uh, especially primary branches. Uh, then the sea arching grazing, they are eating macroalgae, and then we have also the process in the intertidal zone, which is characteristic because we have uh, during the winter time, uh, especially spring, we have extreme uh, low tide and then we can see also uh, the exication of the branches on some canopy forming species. So usually uh, to understand the composition of uh, canopy forming species, we did a mapping along the western eastern coast. We did a mapping uh, in those transects. So we use uh, normally snorkeling, scuba diving technique, uh, but also we use the rubber boat uh, in shallow water. So uh, early in the morning when it's calm water, you are going with the boat uh, and you are trying to see uh, if you can find so continuous belts or sparse belts or larger belts or forests of the mentioned Cystosira uh, uh, species. So the results, excuse me, the results show us that in the central part, uh, in the northern part and central part uh, uh, where uh, big seed cystosira forest, as we can see here, and in the southern part, we find 
just sparse patches of uh, mixed cystosera forest with the dominance of cystosera amentacea in intertidal zone and really with uh, the dominance of the sea archins uh, uh, in uh, subtidal zone. So we also did the mapping of the sea archins because, as I told before, sea archins are grazers, so they are eating macroalgae and as well canopy-forming species. And this matched perfectly to our mapping, what I showed before, because in the northern part uh, we found really uh, sp a very uh, low extent of sea archins, and you can see in the uh, southern part, uh, uh, dense uh, and uh, sea archins have been extending quite well. So, but for us, just the information that some species are coming or not, present absence is not enough. So we uh, wanted to understand quite uh, good uh, the distribution, but also the abundance of those species. So we used sampling design. We divided uh, the central and northern part in four sectors. And in each sector, we uh, have chosen a free location. In each location, uh, at three different depths from 0 0.5 to 2, then from 5 to 7, and 10 to 12, we randomly have chosen three plots, five per five meters, and in each plot uh, uh, we uh, chosen uh, three qu randomly quadrats, uh, 50 per 50 centimeters. In these quadrats, we can measure several things. So, coverage just go indirectly in situ. Uh, this is a variable good, but uh, it's very quite uh, quick with the, in the temporal scale, as well at total weight of tally. And usually we are using uh, the number of tally, so just counting underwater. And also, if we uh, have destructive sampling uh, using quadrats, we are using total weight of the perennial parts of tally. So the results show us that in shallow water, we can find usually the mix of uh, free dominant cystosera species. So we can see here that uh, in green, this is uh, cystosera corniculata, which is present along the uh, northern and central part of the western Istrian coast. The barbata was uh, characteristic for the central part, and cystosera compressa was abundant, but not so much in all inspected location. So these are just the morphological features of those species. So if you're going a little bit deeper, uh, we can find uh, uh, the real forest of two species. As I told before, this is uh, corniculata and foeniculata, so the high abundance of corniculata and in sector four, the, let's say, also high abundance of cystosera foeniculatia. And if you are going uh, a little bit deeper, from 10 to 12 meters, uh, then we see that uh, they are dominant just three species. So it's uh, the high, we found the high abundance of cystosera corniculata and the high abundance of cystosera spinosa. In the same time, because we did the destructive sampling, we tried to uh, define the bottom topography where those species are coming, because the topography is very important. If we would like to do the restoration of some species, we have to know first uh, if uh, the species were there, which species were there, and also we have to know uh, the, quite well the topography which is characteristic for certain uh, canopy forming species. So we found two types of uh, topography, uh, bottom topography measuring slope, sandy bottom fraction and vertical relief. So as we can see here, this is a stepid rocky bottom and it's characteristic for Cystosera corniculata, so the species which is forming real forest. And then the second profile, which is uh, characteristic, so I'm talking just for the western eastern coast, is flat rocky sandy bottom with the sandy bottom fraction about 50% and the vertical relief 2 to 3%. And we found here the dominance of the forest cystosera foeniculatia. 
So we described this in several papers, the, uh, the recolonization of uh, canopy forming species with some uh, uh, distribution uh, patterns and uh, abundance uh, characteristic for the western eastern coast. In the second part, I will talk about the decline of those species which uh, recently happened along the western eastern coast in 2016. And uh, we think that this rapid contraction could be related to the increased seawater temperature, but as well to the increased abundance of the benting blooms of uh, micro and macroalgae. So in summer, by doing our regular monitoring 2015, we found that something happened to Cystosera species, especially to the deciduous parts. But we thought this might be perhaps uh, something what is regular for their vegetative cycle, because in summer, they are going down. So in spring is everything flourishing and in summer depends on the summer. If it's warm summer, we can see something like this here. But then in spring 2016, we returned. We, we are doing regular monitoring in several locations and we found the situation like this here. Instead of having really developed uh, Cystosera forest as you saw in the first part of the uh, presentation, we found just cowloids uh, full of epiphytes. And in some locations, even worse situation, we found just cowloids without epiphytes. So we thought perhaps we can wait one or two months, something will happen, but the situation was uh, for uh, till now is, all, is the same. And now I don't want to be a little bit boring, but I think that is important to understand this decline to introduce you, uh, I choose just one species because the decline was observed on several species, but I will present here the morphological features for one species, which is quite simple. This is Cystosera barbata. Um, so we have the perennial parts. Uh, this is parts, uh, so the whole body of uh, Cystosera we are uh, calling talus, and the talus is, consist, uh, is uh, composed of perennial parts and deciduous parts. Perennial parts uh, has holfast, as we can see here, and the main axis. On the main axis, we have vegetative apex, which is responsible for the production of the branches in the, in the spring. And in the spring, uh, thanks to the vegetative apex, let's say vegetative apices when we have an older species, we have a large volumes of deciduous parts, which is composed of primary branches and adventitious branches. So if we have vegetative apices, we will have primary branches, and then primary branches, they are having some structures, the name is receptacles, and in these structures, we have some reproductive structures, which are very important for the recruitment of those species. So this are settlements of uh, Cystosera barbata in uh, one of our locations. So we can see quite tall and quite dense. And this is this really important uh, morphological feature, vegetative apices, which is responsible for the reproduction of uh, primary branches. So we are asking here which are mechanisms which are um, causing uh, such regression of uh, Cystosera species in the last four years. And uh, we predicted that uh, one might be increasing water temperature. Uh, um, per, we think that increasing water temperature might significantly alter the, the biomass uh, uh, especially after 2015, uh, the biomass and uh, morphological features of uh, canopy forming species. And then uh, our second prediction is that because of the increasing water temperature, we have the high abundance of the benthic blooms, as you can see here. And because of that, we have also the significant uh, uh, altered, uh, or so the, the benthic bloom influence uh, the uh, abundance as well the morphological features of uh, canopy forming species. So we choose two locations. We have many locations, but here I will show just what happened in two locations. In before uh, 2015, we had the situation like this here. So 2014, we did our, we did our regular monitoring. So nice forest, nice belts in shallow water. 
And in 2016 and 17, in the first location, we found a situation like this here. And in 2017, even worse situation. So the sea archins came inside and uh, they destroyed completely uh, the rest of the, uh, these primary branches in the field. In the second location was the same trend. So 2014, we can see the mixed cystozera forest. And in 2016, we found just uh, primary branches without epiphytes. And a uh, 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 year later, we found uh, those branches uh, completely destroyed. So if you would like to collect those branches, uh, uh, those uh, stipes, uh, you need hammer normally and chisel. And uh, in 2017, you were able just to pull from the water and, and uh, collect them. So we wanted to understand what is happening in the seawater and to try to relate this to the increased seawater temperature. So we measured the sea surface temperature anomalies from 2001 to 2017. And the sea surface temperature anomalies show us that uh, in 2011 to 2013 and 2015 and 2017 were positive temperature anomalies, showing an extreme warming in, during 2015 and 2017. Then we divided the years uh, in the warm summers and the cold summers or normal summers, and we were especially, especially interested uh, in uh, years when decline happened. So in 2015, we can see warm summer, which is characteristic for the degraded state, that the frequency of the 26 temperature, 27, was quite high. As well, we found the temperatures uh, in the range of 28. And 2007, we found 26, 25, 28, but also 29. And for the normal summer, when we have really healthy Cystosera uh, forest, we found the uh, uh, temperatures uh, with high frequency 24, 25. And to be much more precise, we put some data loggers to see what, is happen what will happen in our two sampled locations. And we found that in 2017, for about one week, the temperature was in the range from 28, 29. And in 2018, for about 25 days, was in the range 28.1, And also we find just for two days in June, the temperature more than 30 degrees. So because of this uh, high temperature uh, in summer uh, during the last two, uh, during 2015 and 17, was also uh, increased the abundance of the benting uh, blooms of uh, macroalgae and uh, microalgae. And especially in our two locations, we can see that from 2015 to 2018, we have continuous, let's say, continuous appearance of uh, uh, benting blooms of, of uh, macro and uh, microalgae. How this look, bloom look like, you can see on these pictures. So this is the bloom from microalgae. This is cyanobacteria bloom and uh, this here is a bloom of uh, uh, brown macroalgae uh, from genus Ectocarpus and Acinetospora, very frequent uh, in the northern Adriatic. And it's so deep, so you can put all the arm in that. And if it's, for example, in uh, springtime, uh, very calm weather, weather in shallow bays, uh, this can be for more than one month. And you can imagine if something is covered with the, the dense coverage on their self, that uh, with the time, something will happen, some anoxic condition, and that what is living under will die. So, and we think this happened to Cystosera forest uh, species. So uh, just looking how this affects is influencing our species. So we see here that uh, if, uh, if we are looking just to the perennial parts, so the parts which is remaining through the whole year, we can see that uh, significantly lower abundance we found in 2016, 17 and 18 than in 2009 and 2015. And we see that the deciduous parts, which is responsible for the reproduction of those species, was just in 2017, but was not enough for the uh, recruitment uh, of those species. In the second location, uh, uh, there was a similar situation. We see the significantly lower abundance of the perennial parts, and we didn't find any tally during 2017 and 2018. So how does tally look like? Just to go briefly, so you can see 
on this picture, but if you pull this uh, underwater and if you analyze this in the lab, you can see the, something like this here. So this is the perennial parts full of epiphytes. And we clean it, those epiphytes, because we wanted to understand what is uh, under those uh, epiphytes and if we will able to find these vegetative apices. But, as you can see here, after cleaning uh, many tali, we, we saw always the same trend. So we found only perennial parts, whole fast primary branches, which uh, ramified with the time, and uh, this is one highly ramified form, uh, which is typical for an older northern Adriatic Cistosira tali, which we guess is more than 20 years old. And we found the lack of vegetative apices. So there was no chance to reprodu reprodu uh, reproduction of those species. And uh, in one location, uh, in 2017, we found the appearance of the sea archins, which uh, were not the cause of such decline, but they additionally damaged the rest of the uh, cowloids, uh, decorticating their surfaces, as you can see here. They started to eat uh, and also to prey on the cowloids. So here is a short movie just to see how this looked like. So they destroyed also the bottom because the first year was understory assemblages, the macroalgae, and now you can see the rocky bottom and the cowloids. Also, if you have no knowledge that here was Cistosira species, it is hard to say that this was the uh, settlement of uh, canopy-forming species. So, just to summarize at the end, what are our thoughts, uh, what uh, can be the reason for such decline? So, increased seawater temperature, we did altogether 16 surveys in, uh, 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 in all of these two locations. So, we think the, because of uh, increased uh, water temperature, we have the high abundance of the benting bloom from diatoms as well from macroalgae. And also, we have some local factors as sea archins. He uh, which um, are responsible for, uh, as a drivers for some local uh, extinction of those uh, species. And we can see here the shift from normal aspect to degraded aspect through the time. So to the graph at the beginning, I would like just to add uh, two more uh, factors uh, which might be responsible, benting mucilage formation and heat waves, and also uh, some extreme storms, uh, which uh, um, one of those storms happened in 2016 uh, in Rovin area, but was responsible for the extirpation of large uh, brown macroalgae just in exposed places. And uh, I talk uh, about the decline in shallow base and more northern than, uh, 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 than Rovin area. So, so affected areas could remain as I explained, the decline of uh, Cistosira uh, species for many years because of their low recruitment capability. And we need in the future some specific design studies for understanding much better uh, this uh, climate-driven regime shift. And perhaps uh, with using some of your techniques, uh, this is our limit, what we can do. Uh, we are happy with that what we are doing, but uh, we need many people to do the work like this here, and uh, perhaps in the future we can do much precise, much better, perhaps we're doing some modeling uh, as we saw. So there are many things, but uh, so I'm happy to be uh, in this community now with you, and perhaps if you have some idea how we can improve our work, we are happy to, to work together. And uh, just, uh, uh, I will um, tell that that what happened in the last years uh, happened not uh, along the all western Istrian coast, just locally. There is one very nice lagoon in the southern part of the western Istrian coast. It's called Schuza in Pomer. Uh, and we found the Cistosira forest in intertidal, but, but also in subtidal zone. So I just put Go GoPro camera to see, to show you uh, how this looks like, so we can see this is a canopy forming species, but is mixed with uh, uh, seagrass, cimodoza, nodosa. So it's shallow and will be a fantastic place to try some uh, preliminary um, mapping, uh, perhaps using some of your tools.
we already did with uh, our classical methodology using transects and uh, quadrats. And just uh, one more thing uh, I wanted to stress. So all those species, canopy, are cold water species. So um, they suffer for perhaps uh, high uh, uh, summer temperatures, but they need really uh, lower winter temperature for their survival and for they grow. So this is the lagoon I showed you. So we have extreme water temperature in summer, more than 30 degrees, but in spite of that, we have canopy forming species. So our thought that uh, seawater temperature might be responsible for some regression, it's how to say, a little bit weak when we see this lagoon but we discovered this recently. And also last year in March, we found a situation like this here. And after that, I went many times to see what happened if uh, this ice killed or was uh, like a trigger to, to the fl uh, flourishing aspect of uh, canopy forming species. And after that, uh, hold all winter and spring, we found really nice uh, forest. So, I would like to thank uh, the people who helped me uh, this work, uh, to do this work in, uh, along the western eastern coast. So this is our center, uh, situated really close to the sea. So we have all those objects and uh, what we'd like to do in front of our center. We have a big ship in our center, more for oceanographic work. And uh, biologists, uh, we are using mostly this small ship for 12 person and usually rubber boat. And in some location, we are going uh, just with a car. So thank you for your attention. If, if you are interested, uh, I hope that I was not so boring with this species, but I needed to explain because uh, we are dealing with names of the species. Just telling canopy forming species for us is nothing. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>